Hello and welcome to the 2019 NWAL Wrestling Championships here at Wauseon High School. Right now on the mat we've got Rusty Short from Archbold. Wrestling Cameron Henneman from Liberty Center. Currently 2-0 Henneman. And I'm in looking for a leg ride turn here. Oh, he switches to a half and he's got him over on his back now. And that's Cameron Henneman with the pin from Liberty Center over Rusty Short of Archbold in round one. Now wrestling at the 132 pound weight, weight class in the first round of the NWOL League Championships. We have Zach Rocha, a senior from Archbold, against Aiden Fenter, a freshman from Bryan. And Rocha with a quick takedown already here in the first period. Rocha looking for the farmer here. And he's got him turned over on the, in the near fall criteria. And Rocha with the fall in the first round of the 132 pound weight class here for the win. Up now at the 145 weight pound weight class we have Josh Nofsinger, a sophomore from Archbold wrestling Tyler Gowing, a junior from Swanton in the first round. Singer looks like he's looking for the two on one here. Gowing in on a head crotch, looking to return. Nofslinger with a nice cross face there. But it is Gowing with the takedown there. Two red takedown. Gowing up 2 0. Gowing looking for the Merkel there, unable to get it there. And he switches up to a half, and he's got him in near fall criteria. Ten seconds remaining in the period. And it is Tyler Gowing with the fall in the first round at the 145 pound weight class over Josh Nofsinger. Up now at the 160 pound weight class here at the NWL League Championships in the first round, we have Kaysen Schaffner, a senior from Archbold, wrestling Briar Bentley from Montpelier, also a senior. And now that we have the clock fixed, it looks like we're ready to get rolling. Bentley looks to get in on a shot there, unsuccessful. Schaffner with a nice go behind for two takedown. He's winning two to zero.
Schaffner with double boots and appears to be looking for the power half here. And we're in the near fall criteria now. Schaffner's looking for the pin. And that's Schaffner with the pin in the first round here at the 160 pound weight class. In the first pound, in the first round of the 170 pound weight class, we have Caleb Ranzaw, a sophomore from Archbold Wrestling, Tyler Eckler, a senior from Liberty Center. Both wrestlers seem to be fighting for an inside head tie here. Eckler in on a single leg. Now he's looking for a body lock. Eckler with the takedown there. He's winning two to zero now. Eckler looking for either a wing or a half. He seems to be running both and he's looking to turn with the wing over. Not quite in near fall criteria. Now we are, now we're in near fall criteria. Got a two count there. Now four zero, Eckler going into the second period. Eckler chooses down for the second period. And Eckler with a quick reversal there. He's now up 6 0. Eckler's looking for a turn with that arm bar here. Ranzaw doing everything he can to go from going to his back. But there he goes in the near fall criteria. That nice arm bar. And it's Eckler with the pin in the first round there at the 170 pound weight class. In the first round here at the 182 pound weight class, we have Mason Babcock, a junior from Archbold Wrestling, Rollin Robinson from Delta, a, a freshman. Babcock appears to be looking for that snap down there from the neutral position. Front headlock now. Eckler 
As they wrestle there at the edge of the mat, Babcock looks to get his two. And he is around with the go-behind for two takedown. He's up 2-0. Here's a Babcock looking for a tilt here. With the spiral takedown, Babcock almost gets him in a near fall. Babcock seems to be really looking for that far arm tilt. And there it is. But no near fall yet. No near fall there. Still up 2-0 Babcock. And as time runs out of the first period there, we have Babcock up two to zero. Babcock wins a toss. He will defer to the third period. Robinson has chosen down for the second period. Babcock, a really strong wrestler, able to keep him down there off the initial stand-up attempt. It appears that once again Babcock has that far arm trap for Robinson. And there he's going for the tilt again. Not a near fall. And there, oh, there he is. He's going to be getting some backs there for that tilt. He scored two near fall there for a score of four to zero. Babcock looking for a modified half Nelson there. And he's in near fall criteria as the ref begins to count back points. Babcock looking for the pin here. And Babcock is able to get the fall in the first round of the 182 pound weight class. Here at the first round of the 285 pound weight class we have Spencer Simon, a freshman from Archibald against Dalton Richard, a senior from Delta. And Richard with the quick two takedown there. Got one Simon there, score 2 1. And Richard with another takedown there with the snap down. It appears he's going to work on some takedowns here as he lets him back up again. And as the action goes out of bounds, we have a score of four to two. Richard in on a single leg there. It appears he's looking to throw now. And Simon with the attempted lateral there as they go out of bounds. Richard with the takedown straight to the back. We're in near fall criteria right there, and it is Richard with the pin 
of the first round here of the 285 pound weight class of the NWA All Championships. Up now at the Constellation quarterfinals at 145 pounds, we have Josh Nofsinger, sophomore from Archbold, against Tyler Mounch, a freshman from Liberty Center. Nofsinger looking for the two on one there. Nofsinger takes him down to the mat into the front headlock position. Wrestling on the edge of the mat there, and Nofsinger's not able to get around before they go out of bounds. Nofsinger again looking for the two on one there. And as time runs out at the end of the first period, we have a score of 0 0. Munch wins a toss to Furs, and Nofsinger's going to choose down here to begin the second period. Nofsinger with a stand up, unable to get out though, as Munch returns him to the mat. Still 0 0 here in the second period. And Nofsinger nearly with the reversal, but they go out of bounds. They are going to award one green though for lost control, and we're neutral. Nofsinger up 1 0. Munchen on a shot. Nofsinger with the cross face. And Nofsinger is able to get around behind for two. Score 3 0. Nofsinger here with 40 seconds left in second period. Nofsinger seems to have the bar in on the left side, looking to get a turn here. And as he grabs that far wrist, he might be able to get him, but nope, he loses control of that far wrist. Five seconds remaining in the period. And at the end of the second period, it is Nofsinger three, Munch zero. Munch is going to choose down here for the third period. Nofsinger able to stop the stand up off the whistle there. Munch seems to be looking for a switch, not able to find it there. Nofsinger with the bar in. Looking for that far wrist. Nofsinger looking for something to do with that bar. And he looks to throw the half in on the other side. Nofsinger 
Back around to the bar side, unable to get a turn there. As he walks around, it looks like he might, but nope, unable to there. The bar finally comes out as Munch tries to get up. Nofsinger able to keep him down for now. And they're out of bounds. 42 seconds remaining in the third period. Nofsinger's up 3-0. to zero. Caution on Nofsinger. It appeared he didn't have the hand on the elbow there. After an explanation from the official, we go to resume action here. Mullins tries to hit a switch right off the whistle unsuccessfully. Nofsinger appears to be looking for that bar, almost gets his head stuck in there. Nofsinger seems to still be in control here, and we're neutral. One escape, scores three to one. Nofsinger with 23 seconds remaining in the period. And as we break for out of bounds, we have 20 seconds remaining. Munch goes in for a shot. Nofsinger able to counter so far. Nofsinger almost looks like he's able to get around there. Not quite though. Munch still hanging on to that leg, but it looks like Nofsinger is going to get a takedown there. Final score, 5-1 to one in the consolation quarterfinals here at 145 pounds. Nofsinger with the win. Up now for the consolation quarterfinals at 285 pounds, we have Spencer Simon against Carter Huffman from Bryan. Huffman a junior. Spencer a freshman. And Huffman able to get a headlock there in the near fall criteria and the pin quickly there. Huffman will advance on to the Constellation semifinals at 285 pounds. Now wrestling in the championship semifinal match from Archibald, a junior Shane Eicher, and from Wasion, junior Nolan Ray. Ray with the front headlock there. Looking to lock up a cradle. No takedown's been awarded yet. And we're out of bounds, neutral. Still 0 0, minute and 23 left in the first period. Ray, an impossible Merkel position here. Uh-oh, looking for that far leg. He's awarded two takedown, and he's got him splayed right there. Unable to get the pin with the splayed Ray awarded three back points there for the score 5-0. And then two reversal for Iker, score 5-2. After nearly a minute and a half of injury time, we resume. Ray still up five to two here. 46 seconds left in the first period. Iker looking to stay in control, but Ray with the two reversal there. And we're in near fall criteria. Iker's gonna have to fight off his back here. Ray looking for the pin here. Iker's so far able to fight off the pin. 14 seconds left in the period. Iker 
Iker's still trying to fight with three seconds left here. And at the end of the first period with three more near fall there, the score is going to be, they've got it at 10 to two right now. Red's gonna choose top here in the second period. Ray looking for a turn here. Looking to have the double boots in. Iker trying to fight his leg out there. He's able to get one of the legs out. Ray seems to be looking for the guillotine here. Unable to get it there. Ray seems to be looking for a front cradle here. Iker trying to fight up off his base. Unsuccessful there. And Ray's going to get hit for stalling there for sitting on that ankle too long. That's his warning. 39 seconds left here in the second period. Score still 10 to 2, Ray over Riker. Riker attempted stand up right off the whistle, unsuccessful. Ray with the guillotine, very odd guillotine, but. Able to get it. And Ray with the fall there in the second period over Iker. Here at the 132 pound weight class in the championship semifinal match, we have Zach Rocha, a senior from Archbold, against Evan Perry, a freshman from Delta. Rocha in on a high crotch, brings him up off the mat with it. And Rocha is able to get the takedown there on the edge of the mat. Score 2-0, Rocha. Here with a minute and 30 seconds remaining in the first period. Rocha looking for the arm chop and we're out of bounds before he's able to get near fall there. Minute and 13 remaining in the first period. Roach is up two to zero. Roach lets him up, gives him the escape for the score to be two one. Roach in on a nice double leg, able to get two takedown there. Again, wrestling on the edge of the mat here. And we're out of bounds. Score four to one, Rocha over Perry with 25 seconds remaining in the first period. Roach is able to get that arm chopped in there to get a crossed arm. Possibly looking for a tilt here.
Rocha looks like he might be working an arm bar in there. And that's going to be the end of the first period. Score 4-1 to one, Rocha over R Perry. Rocha wins the toss. He's going to defer to Perry. Perry's going to choose down here to start the second period. Perry with the attempted switch there off the whistle. Rocha lets him up for one escape. Score four to two, Rocha. Perry unsuccessful on a shot there. Rocha unsuccessful on the reshot. Perry not fooled by the shot fake there. Rocha on the attempt to double leg, he comes up short. He goes for the dump, unsuccessful. Rocha again tries to dump in, we're out of bounds. Score still four to two. Perry in on a nice high crotch there, not quite scoring yet. Rocha able to get a, a whizzer in there. And Rocha's got two takedown as he's able to scramble out of that. And we're going to go stalemate there with 25 seconds left in the second period. Roach is up 6-2. to two. The Archibald coach is warning of a potential switch here right off the whistle, and Perry does try it unsuccessfully. Rocha trying to get that cross arm. Probably looking for a tilt here from neutral. Unsuccessful there on the mat return. Rocha again seems to be looking for the tilt here, and that's the end of the second period. The score is still 6-2, Rocha. Rocha has choice here in the third period, and he's going to choose down to start the third period. Rocha tries to stand up. Unsuccessful. Perry seems to be very heavy on his head. Roach is going to try to reach around and get that far leg. Looking to get some separation here. And Roach is able to get the reversal there. Score 8-2, to two, Rocha. Minute 36 remaining in the third period. Roach with that far claw looking to get some pressure to the head. And he's going to let him up. Score 8-3, Roach is still. Roach in on a shot, trying to stay in bounds here, whereas he's got that leg caught. And they're out of bounds, they're out of bounds. With a minute 12 remaining, Rocha up 8-3 still. Looks like we've got some blood here by the Delta Rustler. After some brief blood cleanup, we resume with a minute 12 left in the third period. Still Rocha 8-3. Rocha looking for the leg, but they go out of bounds. 57 seconds remaining. Rocha dives in for a single leg, trying to get around that corner there. Perry with a deep whizzer there. Rocha trying to switch up to the other leg. 
so far unsuccessful, able to keep that one leg. No points scored yet here. And with 30 seconds left, it's looking like they might stalemate here. Roach is trying to get around that corner unsuccessfully so far. His coaches are imploring him to reach for that far arm to get the takedown. And Perry's able to get the takedown there. Perry's looking for a cradle or something to get a pin here. Let's him up. Roach is able to get one escape. And that's the end of the match. Final score, eight to five. And it appears Roach has been hit with a unsportsman like there at the end of the match. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, reasoning is, but I'm sure we'll get an explanation from the official here in a moment. Roach with the win. Here at the 138-pound weight class in the championship semifinals, we have Brennan Short, a junior from Archbold, wrestling Ethan Branham, a senior from Swanton. Right off the bat, both wrestlers seem to be very heavy on each other's heads. Short looking for the two on one there. Attempted shot is deflected. And they're out of bounds. 135 seconds remaining. No, sorry, one minute and 35 seconds remaining in the first period. Shorts again looking for that two on one. Crowding it very much. Rocha again crowding that two on or short crowding that two on one. And they're out of bounds there. Short has been hit for stalling. He's been warned. Point of emphasis among referees this year, trying to keep the wrestling action in the center. Troy Roth is the smartest person I know. Said Troy Roth. Short able to deflect all of his shots. Short able to almost get two to the back, but he is still able to get the takedown there. Short's winning two to one, zero. 29 seconds remaining in the first period. Brennan's up two zero. Got a flinch by Short there. He's been warned. Short throws a leg in, looking for a splatle here. Unable to get any near fall out of that one though. Short looking for a guillotine here. And he's hit for potentially dangerous. Uh, and it turns out he was awarded two near fall there. Make the score 4-0, short over Branham. Brandon looking to sit out off the whistle unsuccessfully. He's got that head trap. Nope, and Short's able to get it out. That's the end of the first period. Score 4 0, Short over Branham. Branham defers off the flip. Short's going to choose down.
Brennan looking to base up here. Able to get to his feet. Not able to get separation yet for the one yet. Brandon still in control here. Still Branham. And there, Short's awarded the two reversal. Short appears to be looking for that front side cradle. He's got to be careful with that, but he's got him in near fall right there. Short seems to be in very good control here as he's looking for the pin. And right there, Short's able to get the fall. He will advance to the finals at 138 pounds. Here at 152 pounds in the championship semifinals, we have Carson Meyer, junior from sophomore from Archibald, my bad, against Ryan Marvin, a senior from Swanton. Marvin very heavy on Meyer's head here. Meyer able to escape from it. Marvin in on a shot, tries to dump, unsuccessful. Meyer's able to keep a whizzer. And Marvin's able to get the takedown as they go out of bounds. Minute 24 remaining in the first period. Marvin looking to get a bar in on that right side of Meyer. Meyer able to escape there for one. Score 2-1, Marvin. Marvin with those long arms able to get in on a single leg. Meyer trying to get that wizard in here at the edge of the mat. Marvin tries to switch up to a double leg and he's successful. He's able to get the takedown four to one with 30 seconds remaining here in the first period. And we're out of bounds. 24 seconds remaining. Meyer with stand up here. See if he's able to get away for one here with 18 seconds remaining in the first period. The Archibald coach is looking for stalling here. Marvin able to hang on to that leg. And that's the end of the period. Meyer not able to get the one. Oh wait, no, I'm, I stand corrected. There's half a second remaining in the period. And at the end of the first period, score 4-1, Marvin. Meyer chooses down here to begin the second period. Marvin gonna option start him. Let's him up for one. Score four to two. Marvin. It appears Meyer got bopped in the eye there. Marvin looking to dump here. Marvin able to get around to the side. Score six to two.
Marvin decides to let him up here. Score 6-3, Marvin. Minute and 10 seconds remaining in the second period. Marvin able to get another takedown there. Makes the score 8 to 3. 50 seconds remaining in the second period. Marvin not able to seem to be able to do anything once he gets on top there though, as Meyer has good defense on bottom. And Marvin is warned for stalling. Thirty-four seconds remaining in the second period. Meyer hits stand up and he's able to get away with it. Eight to four. Marvin. Marvin able to get in on a deep single leg there. Marvin looking to keep it in bounds. Meyer trying to get the wizard in there. Marvin looking to trip a little bit there. Meyer almost stops wrestling there. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but he's able to get out of it as they go out of bounds. Seven seconds remain in the second period. Marvin up eight to four here. Be ready, be ready. Marvin seems to be at a distinct advantage when he gets in on that single leg with those long arms, able to just reach in and grab it. End of the second period. Marvin's going to choose down and begin the third period here. Once again, the score is eight to four. Marvin over Meyer. Marvin hits stand up. Meyer unable to stop him. That makes the score nine to four. Tie up here. Marvin again in on that deep single leg. Able to score it. Makes the score eleven to four. Marvin looking to run the half. Nelson there. Meyer able to fight it off. Marvin looking for a cheap tilt there after. Meyer tries to fight up to his feet here. Marvin seems to be looking for that arm bar now. Meyer hits stand up successfully to make the score 11 to 5. 56 seconds remaining here in the third period. Meyer's probably going to have to try to throw him here if he wants to make something happen still in the match. Marvin with the duck under, able to get in on the single leg once again. Meyer trying to keep the leg between him is able to defend it off. Twenty-five seconds remaining here in the third period. Meyer looks like he seems to throw. He tries it and nothing. Unsuccessfully, Meyer tries to throw him as they go out of bounds. 11 seconds remaining in the third period. Meyer looks like he's still looking for a lateral here. Marvin able to get in on another single leg. At this point, Meyer looks like he's going to try to fight it off unsuccessfully. Marvin scores two more points. That's going to make the final score 13 to 5. Ryan Marvin over Carson Meyer in the championship semifinals. Here at 160 pounds in the championship semifinals, we have Kaysen Schaffner, a senior from Archbold. Wrestling Cameron Foster. Nope. I'm sorry, that's Brian Floyd from Evergreen. Floyd a Jr. Schaffner in on a single leg. Trying to keep it, traps it, brings it up off the mat. Trying to hold on to it here as Floyd seems to be trying to run off the mat. Schaffner's trying to keep him in bounds. Schaffner tries to trip. Unable to get it there. Still not awarded two as they're near the edge of the mat. Two. 
And he does get the two takedown right before they go out of bounds. With a minute left in the period, Schaffner is up 2-0 as he looks to see where that anklet came from that was sticking to his chest. Floyd with the very quick switch there, able to get a quick two reversal, score two to two. Schaffner, Schaffner looks to get up from his base here. Trying to slowly stand up here. Able to get the escape. That makes score three to two, Schaffner over Floyd. Thirty seconds remain in this first period. Schaffner working a two on one. Schaffner tries to bring the two on one down to the mat. And it gets Floyd into a single leg, but he's unsuccessful in getting it, and we're out of bounds too with no takedown by either wrestler there as the scramble goes out of bounds. Schaffner bangs on the head right off the whistle here. Five seconds remain in the period. And at the end of the first period, we have Schaffner three, Floyd two. Schaffner's going to defer here, and Floyd's going to go down to begin the second period. Floyd with that very good switch earlier. Schaffner's going to look to defend that right off the whistle. Schaffner tries to throw a boot in. Floyd's trying to fight that boot out. Schaffner seems to be looking for the power half. He's able to stuff the head, get the arm back there. Able to break him down to the mat here. Schaffner looks like he's trying to get both those, uh, those wrists pulled out behind. But Floyd, very strong, able to keep him out in front of him. Schaffner gets the boot out. And he goes to throw it back in. Schaffner's got that leg figure forward. Floyd tries to sit him out. Schaffner might be looking for a power half here. Thirty-eight seconds remain in the second period. Schaffner still up three to two. Schaffner with that leg turk trying to turn him over. But Floyd able to defend him off each time. Ten seconds remain in the second period here. Schaffner trying to stay on top. Schaffner able to roll through that attempted switch. And at the end of the second period, it's still Schaffner three, Floyd two. We're going to go into the third period. It's going to be Schaffner's choice. He's choosing down. Floyd with that claw, trying to get that far arm. Floyd tries to pull that head underneath, unsuccessful. Schaffner trying to get around back behind here to get two reversal. And there he's able to make score five to two Schaffner. The Archibald coach is yelling to Schaffner to get a Merkel, but he lets him up, makes the score five to three with a minute and 15 seconds remaining in the third period here in the championship semifinals. Yeah. 
Floyd tries to get in on that single leg. Schaffner sprawling, tries to hammer it. They scramble. Floyd trying to get around, get that arm around, try to score his two. Schaffner doing his best to stop him. And we're out of bounds. 50 seconds remaining. Schaffner's up five to three. Hit him. Schaffner trying to keep the action on the mat here. Floyd goes in for a high crotch. Tries to switch over to that other leg, able to just stay in deep on that one leg of Schaffner. Schaffner tries to sprawl it out. Schaffner's trying to sit him out. Floyd's going to try to get that arm around, try to get two. Schaffner's just going to sit there, and we're able to get a stalemate. It appears the clock ran over a little bit. They're going to put 14 seconds on the clock. Still neutral here in the third period. Schaffner up 5-3. to three. Floyd in on a do double leg with his head inside. Schaffner trying to sprawl, trying to sprawl here. Floyd doesn't look like he's going to be able to do anything with it as time is going to run out here. Schaffner wins 5-3 to three in the championship semifinals. He'll be going on to the finals. At 182 pounds here, we have Mason Babcock against Jackson Radabaugh here in the championship semifinals here at NWOL Championships. Babcock in on a very nice single leg right off the bat. He scores two. Babcock looking to get that far arm chopped. Tries to tilt him, almost pins himself on his back there. He's got to be careful about that. Babcock tries to dig that arm out. Trying to run that wing over Rattleball there. Babcock's able to get him into near fall criteria for a one count, but no points scored yet. And he stuffs the half and it looks like he's got it in pretty deep. Rattleball doesn't look like he's moving much. Babcock looking for the pin here and he gets it. Mason Babcock with the pin. He's going to advance on to the finals at 182 pounds here at the NWAL League Championships. Here at 220 pounds at the NWAL League Championships, we've got Izzy Reyes, a senior from Archibald, against Aaron Harris, a senior from Wauseon. Trying to get the clock fixed. They apparently only put 101 minute and 59 seconds instead of the full two minutes. Now we got it fixed. Harris looking for the double underhooks there. Izzy tries to fight out of it. Harris very heavy on Reyes's head there. Harris tries to pull Reyes down to the mat unsuccessfully. Reyes able to fend him off. Harris reaches for that leg and nothing happening. And the wrestler's going to the over-under position. Fifty-two seconds remaining here in the first period. No real action yet. Harris tries to throw Reyes unsuccessfully. Reyes ends up on top of him for two takedown as they go out of bounds.
Harris with stand up here trying to get away from Reyes. Reyes is able to trip him, get back down. Harris is able to fend him off, get one escape, and we're neutral. Score two to one Reyes over Harris with 25 seconds remaining here in the first period. Ten seconds left in the period. The wrestlers go back into the over-under position. And that's the end of the first period. Ray is going to defer here to Harris. Harris is going to choose down to start the second period. Reyes is going to put him neutral here to make the score 2-2. Two to two. Harris tries to throw. Comes out on top but not able to get the two takedown and they're out of bounds. Reyes did not look comfortable there with both arms trapped under there. Reyes goes in on a shot and gets hammered down to his back. Harris standing on top with the fall. Harris is going to advance to the finals here at 220 at the NWL League Championships. Now wrestling at 113 pounds. In the consolation semifinals, we have Rusty Short, a freshman from Archbold, against Zach LaPlante, a freshman from Swanton. Waiting on the scoreboard to get reset here. Plant chasing after short here. Consistently banging on that head. Tries to reach and grab the far leg, unsuccessful. The plant brings short down to the mat into the front headlock position, looking for a cradle here. He's able to get the two takedown and he's got the cradle. Short trying to fight off his back. Able to fight off his back, but they award two near fall for LaPlante. Score 4-0, LaPlante over short. Three seconds remaining. And that's the end of the first period. Short's going to choose down to begin the second period. Plant able to, able to get that arm trapped right off the whistle. Short's trying to walk that arm out forward, get it out of there. The plant reaches it across, gets a far arm. He's trying to dig a wrist out here. The plant looks like he's looking for a. Oh, never mind, he lets it go. Plant's trying to get the cradle locked up, almost has it, but then let's go. Trying to get that cross leg, trying to break him down. The plan is short posts out though, so he's unsuccessful. Plant now working that far claw. Short tries to crawl out in front of him, but unsuccessful as LaPlante breaks him down to the mat. LaPlante's looking to get that bar in on the left side. Short's trying to keep that arm down, trying to get him from turning him over with it. LaPlante seems to have that bar locked in pretty deep. 
And he's able to stop that far wrist, tries to break the foot with the head. Not able to turn him though. The short stays out of near fall. LaPlante well, still has that bar in pretty deep. Short's trying to sit out on it. Able to get that arm out finally. 10 seconds left in the period. LaPlante still up 4-0. And at the end of the second period, it's still LaPlante 4 0. LaPlante's going to choose down to begin the third period here. LaPlante tries to switch right off the whistle, unsuccessful at first. Now he looks like he's trying to hit a stand up. Short looks like he's going for the cradle, but unsuccessful in getting it. LaPlante grabs a leg, he's trying to spin around, get a reversal, and he got it. He takes him straight down to his back. No near fall there, though. Plant in control here, 6-0, with a minute and 20 remaining in the third period. Short's trying to work his base up. A plant keeping that pressure forward, able to break him down. Fifty seconds remaining here in the third period. Still a plant six zero. Short tries to climb back up to his base. LaPlante tries to get that cradle locked up again, but they go out of bounds. Thirty-eight seconds remain in the match. Short tries to get a stand up here. LaPlante's still trying to keep that arm around him. And with a mat return, he kind of slams him there, but we keep wrestling. Sixteen seconds left, and it looks like LaPlante's going to stay in control here. And as time runs out, it's going to be LaPlante 6-0 over Short in the, in the uh, consolation semifinals. Short will wrestle for fifth place next. Good work, nice match. At 126 in the consolation semifinals, we have Shane Eicher against Drew Bowser from Liberty Center. Bowser tries to get standing two there, able to return him, and he has his two takedown. Iker able to get an escape, makes the score two to one. Bowser. Iker tries to go in on a high crotch. Bowser able to sprawl out of it. And at the end of the first period, it's 2-1 Bowser over Iker. Bowser defers, Iker's gonna go down.
Eicher hits stand up, trying to get a, some separation here, able to try to score his point, able to stay up. Schaller switches up to a double leg, or Bowser that is, I'm sorry. Bowser able to bring him back down. Bowser looking for a cradle as they go out of bounds. Still in control, Bowser here, 2-1. Bowser with the claw tries to throw a boot in. Shane's trying to hit a stand up here. Iker tries to grab that hand and sneak out behind, and he does, and he's able to get the two reversal to make the score three to two. Iker over Bowser. Iker able to sink a wing in there. Iker drives the wing, tries to get him over into near fall criteria, not able to yet. Oh, and it slips out. Iker trying to chop that near arm there. Switches up to a single leg. Iker tries to trip. Iker tries to return him. Able to keep him down there, Iker is. 25 seconds remaining in the second period, still 3-2, to two, Iker. Bowser tries to hit a switch unsuccessfully. Iker switches up single leg again, 10 seconds remaining. Iker worn for stalling here. That's the end of the period. Three to two, Iker. Bowser chooses down here to begin the third period. The score is still three to two, Iker over Bowser. Iker has a deep tice waist in. Able to break him down with it. He tries to get that arm bar up there. Ah, he loses it. Bowser trying to get in on a single leg to get the reversal here. Iker trying to sprawl out here. Still Iker in control here. Still Iker in control here. They have not awarded two reversal yet. And they do award two reversal to Bowser. And score now 4-3 Bowser with a minute and eight seconds left in the third period. Iker tries to stand up here. Again, Iker up off the mat trying to get some separation here, get his one escape. And they do give Iker the one escape. That ties it up at four with 35 seconds remaining here in the third period. The, the score is tied at four apiece. Schaller tries to, or Bowser tries to slide by unsuccessfully. Iker has been warned for stalling. Iker tries to go in on a shot at almost the same time as Bowser. Bowser gets Iker in the front headlock position. Iker's still in on that single leg, trying to get around behind. Nine seconds left in the match. Iker trying to bring up the single leg. He's trying to get it. Three seconds, two, one. And it looks like we're heading to overtime here with the score still tied four to four. Iker and Bowser. Iker tries to work a two on one here. Gets his head stuck under there in the front headlock position. Bowser tries to spin around behind, but Iker grabs a leg. 
He's going to try to work around behind. If he can pop his head out, that's going to be two right there. And he's able to do it, and that's two takedown and the match, ladies and gentlemen. Shane Eicher wins and is going to move on to the third and fourth place match here at the NWOL Championships at 126 pounds. Wrestling in the consolation semifinals, we have Josh Nofsinger and Josefat Hinojosa from Patrick Henry wrestling here. Hinojosa is a senior. Hinojosa tries to get in on a double leg, but unsuccessful as Nofsinger is able to sprawl out of it. Hinojosa tries to trip, unsuccessful. Five seconds left in the period here. And we're gonna head into the second period, still tied 0-0. Nofsinger is going to choose down here to begin the second period. Still tied 0 0. Nofsinger almost able to get a defensive fall there as Hinojosa almost pins himself and trying to get a tilt. Hinojosa tries another tilt. No near fall though. Hinojosa is trying that tilt again. Again, almost defensive falls himself. Nofsinger's up on the mat trying to get an escape and he finally gets it to score the first point of the match. Nofsinger up 1-0. You'll see in the far mat, Carson Myers match is about to begin. Myers is wrestling Caleb Barnes from Delta. That is also a consolation semifinal match. Here on this match, Hinojosa able to get the takedown. On the far mat, Carson Meyer able to get a takedown. On the near mat, Josh Nofsinger able to get an escape to score, tie that up 2-2. And as the second period on the near mat comes to an end, the score is still tied 2-2, two to two, Nofsinger and Hinojosa. On the far mat, we have Meyer up 2-0 with 23 seconds left in the first period. Nofsinger trying to keep Hinojosa down here on the near mat. Meanwhile, on the far mat, the first period comes to a close, and Carson Meyer is up 2-0. to zero. Here on the near mat, Hinojosa able to get the escape, puts him up 3-2. to two. Hinojosa in on a deep single leg here on the near mat. Nofsinger bails out, gives him the two takedown. That makes the score on the near mat 5-2, to two. Hinojosa over Nofsinger. Oh, 
on the far mat, Carson Meyer able to get the escape. That puts him up 3-0 over Caleb Barnes from Delta. Near mat still 5-2, Hinojosa over Knopfsinger. On the far mat, Carson Meyer able to get a two takedown. That's going to put him up 5-0. Joff Knopfsinger able to fight off any near fall here on the near mat. Knopfsinger still trying to stay off his back here on the near mat. 22 seconds left here on this near mat. 5 to 2, Hinojosa over Knopfsinger. Knopfsinger able to get two reversal though. That puts the score 5 to 4. One escape puts it 6 to 4. 10 seconds left. Knopfsinger needs a takedown here to tie it up. Hinojosa gets in deep on a double leg. Two seconds left. No, they do not award the two. They do not award the two. They say time ran out. Knopfsinger's going to lose six to four. He will be wrestling for fifth and six. Unfortunate, as he had a nice takedown there just after the whistle. Meanwhile, on the farm, at the second period comes to a close as Carson Meyer's still up five to zero. Ryan Boyd on that match two. Five zero Myers where they start the third period over there. Meyer gets in on a high crotch on Barnes, able to take him down. That puts him up seven zero. Minute thirty eight remaining in the third period over there. Meyer lets him up, that puts the score at seven to one. Minute 20 remaining. Meyer gets in on a single leg, tries to bring him down to the mat. Barnes Wizards is able to fend off that single leg. Barnes goes in on a shot. Meyer looks like he's going to be able to spin around behind. Barnes still holding on to that leg, though. Meyer looks like he's looking for a barbed wire there, able to get two takedown, and he is going to try to run the barbed wire there, unable to get any near fall with it, though. He seems to have let it go. 35 seconds remaining in the match. Carson Meyer is up 9-1 to one over Caleb Barnes. And they go out of bounds. 28 seconds left in the match. Barnes tries to switch. Meyer able to stop it. Meyer looks like he's got that far arm trapped underneath. Looks like he's looking for a tilt here. Instead he comes across, chops the top arm down, able to break him down to the mat. Eight seconds remain in the match. Carson Meyer seems to be sitting in a very good position as he's up nine to one. Three seconds remaining. And Carson Meyer will advance to wrestle for third and fourth here at the NWAL League Championships with a final score of nine to one. At the 170 pound weight class, we have Caleb Ranzaw from Archbold wrestling Gavin Worm from Montpelier. This is the consolation semifinal match. Worm looks like he's trying to work a two on one there on Ranzaw. Okay. 
20 seconds remaining in the first period, still 0 0 here. And as the first period comes to a close, it's still tied 0-0 between Ranzal and Worm. Ranzal wins the, the disc flip and he's going to choose down. Got a caution on Worm there, you got to have that hand on the elbow, not above the elbow. And we're in free move territory as Worm locked hands. With that illegal hold, that's going to put Ranzal up 1-0. Worm seems to be looking for a splatter there. Doesn't get it. Ranzo is trying to stay off his back here, but with that leg in, Worm seems to be getting a lot of pressure. <laughs> Ranzo tries to stand up here. Able to return him as Worm. One minute and four seconds remain in the second period. Score 1 0, Ranzal. Worm seems to be able to keep Ranzal down here. Worm's looking to get that arm out. Ranzo tries to circle away from it. And the action carries him out of bounds here with 25 seconds remaining in the second period. The score is Ranzo 1, Worm 0. Worm grabs that ankle, keeps him down off the bat. Ranzo's trying to work up here. He has seven seconds left if he wants to get an escape. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to here. As the second period comes to a close, we got Ranzo one, Worm zero. Worm's going to choose down here to begin the third period. Oh, Worm tries to clamp and roll unsuccessfully. He's got a leg there, though. Ranzal looks like he's hanging on, trying to stay on top. Worm's going to want to keep that leg. He's going to. Ranzo able to hang on. Ranzo still in control here. Minute and 23 seconds remaining here in the third period. Ranzo still up 1 0 on top. Ranzal still in control here. Worm tries another clamp and roll. Worm's got that leg. He's going to want to keep that. The Archibald coach is imploring Ranzal to run a barbed wire. Ranzal 
Ranza able to stay on top here. 44 seconds remaining, one nothing Ranza. Ranza trying to work those wrists out. Twenty nine seconds remaining, still Ranza one, worm zero. Worm tries another clamp and roll and he's gonna get it. He's awarded the two reversal. Worm up 2-1 with 14 seconds remaining here in the third period. 10 seconds left. The Archibald coach is imploring Ranzaw to get a stand up here but it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to. At the end of the match, it's gonna be two to one. Worm, final. Ranzaw will wrestle for fifth and sixth next. Here at the 220 pound weight class, we have Izzy Reyes of Archibald, a senior against Mason Foote, a junior from Montpelier here in the Constellation semifinals. Reyes looking to snap the head down a foot. Halfway through the first period, still tied 0-0. Reyes tries to force Foot's head down unsuccessfully. Nine seconds remain in the period. And it appears at the end of the first we're gonna be tied still 0-0. Reyes wins the disc flip, he's gonna choose down. Reyes working to stand up, able to get away for one escape for the first point of the match. Reyes winning Reyes tried to slide by unsuccessfully. Reyes trying to work that head down. Can't seem to keep it down once he gets it down. Still Reyes here, one nothing with a minute left in the second period. Reyes tries a head tap. Reyes with a shot fake, tries to get in the over. Oh. 22 seconds remain here in the second period. Still Reyes up 1-0. Not a whole lot of action going on here. Five seconds remaining. And we finish up the second period with Reyes up one nothing over Foot. Going into the third period, Foot chooses Foot. I'm sorry, chooses down position. Reyes is going to put him up neutral to tie it at one one.
Reyes trying to work that head of foot down, but can't seem to keep it down once he gets it a little bit. Izzy with a shot fake there. Bully double, able to get it to take down Reyes as they're almost out of bounds. He's keeping him in so far. That puts Reyes up three to one. Reyes is gonna put him neutral again. That makes the score three to two, Reyes over foot. Foot tries a fireman's and then a dump. Foot gets it and he takes Reyes down straight to his back into near fall criteria. Awarded two near fall there after the two takedown. That makes the score six to three. Foot over Reyes. One minute remaining in the third period. Reyes working a stand up. Able to get two reversal. We've got Reyes with two reversal there to put the score six to five foot over Reyes. It appears the Montpelier coach is going to challenge, asking about lost control there at the end. And after some delegation, it appears that they decided not to give lost control there at the end. Still foot six five over Reyes. Reyes is going to put him neutral though now. That makes the score seven to five foot over Reyes. 43 seconds remaining here in the third period. Reyes needs a takedown to tie it up. Reyes shoots in on a double egg. Foot's able to back out of it. 33 seconds remain here. Reyes shoots for a double leg, unable to get it, and he falls down, and Foot's going to get around behind to put the score nine to five foot over Reyes. That might seal it, ladies and gentlemen. And as time runs out, it is final. It's going to be Foot over Reyes, nine to five. Reyes will wrestle for fifth and six. Wrestling at 113 pounds in the fifth place match for Archibald, Rusty, Short, and for Montpelier, Landon, Briggle. Both of these young gentlemen are both freshmen. Short looks for a high crotch. Unable to keep a hand on the leg. And Briggle's able to get around for two. Briggle looking for a cotton crotch there. Fifteen seconds left in the period. Briggle up 2-0. And as the first period comes to a close, the score is 2-0. Briggle over short. Briggle tries to work a stand up so far short able to keep him down. Briggle tries to sit out and he's able to 
he does get the one escape. That's going to put him up 3 0. Short tries to get a leg. He's able to get up. He's going to have to try to work his way up, and he's able to. He's going to have a two takedown there. That's going to put him down three to two with a minute and 15 left in the second period. Short trying to run the barbed wire here. Forty-five seconds left in the period. Short still in control here. Briggle tries to switch up into a single leg and they're out of bounds. Short still gonna stay in control here. Briggle down. Thirty-two seconds remain in the second period. Score still Briggle three, short two. Got a caution on uh, short here. Short looking for a cradle, unable to get it. Looks like he's got it locked up. Short's able to stay in control but not get any near fall with that cradle. Nine seconds left in the period. Short's going to ride him out for the end of the period. Score still Briggle three, short two as we head into the third period. Short's going to choose down here. We're going to get an escape and tie it up. Gonna have a caution on Briggle here from Montpelier. Looks like he didn't have that. Yep, he did not have his hand exactly on the elbow. He's very. Uh, I'm gonna make sure we do that. Got another caution on Green here. He's telling him he's got to go to the back of the elbow rather than the front of it. And after he's able to get the starting position correct, we start the third period. Briggle locked hands there, so we got a free move here. With that locked hands, it's gonna tie the score up to three apiece. After the coach's challenge, we resume. Still tied three to three. Minute and 44 left in the third period. That's going to be another caution on Briggle there. That's going to be a point for short. That actually puts him in the lead four to three. Come on, Pillier coach does not seem happy with his wrestler that he's unable to get the starting position correct. Briggle looking for a bar on top here. Short's going to try to walk that arm out. He's able to do it. Minute and 20 remaining here in the third period. Short's going to try to get an escape. Unable to get it. But he does get a reversal and the ref signal for locked hands. So that's going to be another point for Green. It should put Short up, six, yep, there it is, 6-3. Short up 6-3 to three with a minute left in the third period over Briggle. Yeah. 
Short looking to get that far wrist. Briggle clamps and rolls, almost able to get, might be able to get around here to get two reversal. Short's got to get his hips up if he's going to want to stay out of near fall. Short gives up the reversal, but not near fall. That leaves the score at six to five short. Oh, but now it appears Short's able to reverse him. That puts him up by three with 23 seconds remaining here in the third period. Ten seconds left. Short's able to hang on without giving up a reversal there at the end. He's going to win it eight to five. He's going to be your fifth placer here at the 113 pound weight class for the NWOL championships. We've got the fifth place match here at the NWOL league championships between Caleb Ranzov of Archibald and Spencer Goodside of Delta. Ranzo in on a deep double leg. See if he's able to finish. He is. That's going to put him up 2 0. Ranzo is looking to take a wing there out to the side, unable to get it. Five seconds left in the period. Looks like Ranzo is going to come away with a 2-0 lead after the end of the first period. Ranzo wins a coin flip. He's going to choose down. The Archibald coaches wanted a caution there, but they're not going to get it. Good side throws a boot in. Looks like he's going to try to power half here. Ranzo is able to peel the arm off. He's working on a stand up right now. He's able to get the boot out. Good side throws it back in as they come up, and they're out of bounds. Minute 30 remaining in the second period. Ranzo still has a 2-0 lead over Goodsight. Goodside tries to get a half in, but Ranzo seems to be able to look away each time he gets it in there. Forty-five seconds remaining in the second period, still Ranzo 2-0. Goodsight keeps hopping sides, looking to get the half in, unable to do it so far. Ranzo tries to sit it out. Goodsight tries to pull him back into near fall. Not yet, though. Got a one count, but no back points there. And now Ranzo is in near fall criteria. Goodsight's going to be getting some back points here with five seconds left in the period. Those three back points for good side are going to put him up three to two over Ranzo. Going to start the third period here.
Like Green chose top, I guess. Good sight, looks to throw that boot in again right off the bat. Good sight gets the boot in. Minute 30 remaining here in the third period. Ranzos trying to work up to his base, but he just keeps getting broken down by good sight. With a minute five remaining here in the third period, Ranzaw is going to have to get something going here if he's going to want to tie it up. Ranzaw able to almost get up to his feet, and they go out of bounds. 56 seconds remaining here. Still good sight up three to two over Ranzaw. Good side's able to break down Ranzo off the whistle. Looks like he's looking for a half. Good side's got that boot in once again. Good side's looking for a turn here. Not able to get Ranzo on a near fall though. 29 seconds remain in the period. Still good side three to two over Ranzo. Good sight, looking for a turn here. And as they go out of bounds, the score is still three to two. Good sight over Ranzal with 12.3 seconds remaining here in the third period. Ranzal's gonna need to get an escape or something here to get this match tied up if he wants it to continue. Ranzal tries to knee slide out and he's unable to. Five seconds left. And as Good Sight throws the double boots in, it looks like that's going to wrap this match up. Spencer Good Sight is going to take fifth place here at the NWOL Championships, leaving sixth place to Caleb Ranzal. Here at the fifth place match in the NWOL League Championships, we have Izzy Reyes of Mont or uh, <laughs> excuse me of Archbold wrestling Zaven Waddell Waddell from Swanton. Fifteen seconds left in the first period. Score still zero zero. And as the first period comes to a close, score is still zero zero. Waddell wins the coin flop and chooses down. Waddell able to get a quick stand up there to give him the lead 1-0. As they get into the over under position and they break apart. Both wrestlers have just been hit for stalling. They have both been worn for stalling. The minute and 20 left. 
Waddell with the go behind, but not quite. Reyes is able to keep a foot to block him. That keeps the score at 1 0 Waddell over Reyes. Waddell able to get a takedown there. That puts him up 3 to 0 with 55 seconds left in the second period. Reyes looks to get a double leg here to get a reversal. Able to lift him up into the air, brings him. And the ref's going to stop the action right there. He's going to call a slam on Reyes. They're going to award one escape to Reyes for lost control here. That's going to put the score at 4-1 to one after the penalty point given to Waddell. With 37 seconds left here in the second period, Waddell up 4-1. Reyes trying to hold on to that leg, looking for a takedown. Waddell trying to get around behind. Reyes still able to hold on to the leg for now, though. Reyes tries to pop his head out and drive across. 12 seconds left in the period. Reyes is going to need to get a takedown here if he's going to want to keep it close. Reyes able to get the two before time runs out. That's going to put the match score at 4-3. to three going into the third period. Reyes is going to choose down here. Reyes able to get a quick stand up. Not able to separate quite yet though. Waddell lets him go. That's going to tie it up at 4-4 four to four with a minute and 45 seconds left in the third period. Waddell looking to throw here. Izzy grabs the leg, stop him from going around behind, and he gives up the leg, and that's going to be a takedown for Waddell. That puts him up 6-4 to four with a minute and 25 left here in the third period. Waddell looking for a power half here. Reyes finally able to work back up to his base. He's got an arm on that leg of Waddell. Reyes might be able to get us. If he gets away here, he'll be getting an escape. There he goes. With 45 seconds left, that puts Waddell up 6-5 to five over Reyes. Reyes is going to need a takedown here if he's going to want the lead. Twenty seconds left in the match here. Is he down by one? Gets in on a nice double leg, able to get around behind for two to take down. That's going to put him up seven to six. Reyes still in control here, able to hold on. Waddell's looking for the escape. If he's able to get it, he'll tie it up. Five seconds left in the match. Reyes holding on by a thread. And that's going to be the match, ladies and gentlemen. Izzy Reyes hangs on to win it 7-6 to six over Zaven Waddell from Swanton. Now wrestling for third place at 126 weight pound class, Shane Eicher from Archibald and Ashton Varney from Montpelier. Iker dives in on a shot. Varney able to sprawl out of it.
25 seconds left in the first period. Still tied at two between Iker and Varney. Varney gets in on a shot, but they're out of bounds. 21 seconds left in the first period. Varney looking for the front headlock, trying to spin around to the back. Five seconds left. Iker trying to drag out. And they're going to remain tied at zero at the end of the first period. Varney wins the disc flip, and he's going to choose down to begin the second period. Iker drops down to a single leg. Iker trying to work up the body of Varney here. And we go out of bounds. Iker still in control here, still tied 0 0. Minute 38 left in the second period. Going to have a caution here on Varney. Varney hits stand up. Iker drops down to a single leg. Varney's trying to get some separation between himself and Iker. Iker drops down onto two legs now. Iker trying to hang on to control here. Varney trying to get away. Unable to right now. Again, Iker up with a single leg with the trip down, out of bounds. Iker's still in control here. Minute and 10 seconds left in the second period. And we're gonna have another caution here. This time it's going to be on Iker, the caution. Varney tries to sit out. Iker drops down to a single leg, trying to stay in control here. Still tied 0-0 with a minute left in the second period. Iker's trying to walk around that back behind there, stay in control here. Varney looking for a splaydle. Iker's still in control here. 40 seconds left in the period. Tied 0 0. Iker just hanging on to that leg, hoping to maintain control. Varney looking to get some separation here, trying to sprawl back a little bit. Iker finally lets go of the leg, gives up the escape to Varney. That's going to put Varney in the lead 1-0 with 15 seconds left in the second period. And as time runs out in the second period, Varney is up 1-0 over Iker. Iker chooses down going into the third period. Right off the whistle, Iker tries to stand up. Varney under the single leg, drives him into the mat. That's going to be a slam right there, ladies and gentlemen. And with that penalty point, that ties it up at one apiece. Minute 50 left in the third period. Iker again trying to get a stand up. Varney again switches to a single leg, brings him back down. Same. This time a little softer, not getting called for the slam. Iker trying to walk that leg out, but Varney wants to keep it turked. And as they go out of bounds, it's tied 1-1 with a minute and 27 seconds left in the third period.
Varney out in front here with pressure. Eicher tries to stand up. Varney switches up to the leg again, brings him back down with it. Varney very strong with that. It appears Varney has been warned for stalling. I'm assuming the stalling was called because Varney had that ankle trapped and wouldn't let it go. A minute and five seconds left here, still tied at one apiece. Iker trying to work up here again. Varney's going to switch down to that single leg. Varney's going to drive Iker into the mat. Iker trying to whiz her, get some separation here. Iker's going to want to stay up, and he does get his one escape, and we are out of bounds. That's going to put Iker up 2-1 to one with 47 seconds remaining in the third period. We're neutral. Iker in on a shot. Gets around the side of that single leg. He's going to try to bring it up off the mat. Varney's trying to keep the separation there. Iker's trying to work that leg forward, bring it up a little bit. 20 seconds left. Iker's still up 2-1 here. Varney's able to get his foot back down onto the mat with a strong whizzer, but Iker's hanging onto that leg as hard as he can. Nine seconds left. Varney able to get a little momentum, but Iker holding onto that leg. It's looking like Iker's going to be able to hang on to the win here. Iker wins 2-1 to one over Varney to place third at the NWAL League Championships. 15 seconds into the championship match here at 132 pounds. We're going to have some blood time here. Tied 0-0, 15 seconds in. Wrestling here at the 132 pound weight class, we have Zach Rocha, a senior from Archibald, and Connor Twig, a freshman from Wauseon. Twig tries to get in on a double leg. Rocha is able to sprawl out. Rocha with a reshot and a dump. Rocha is able to scramble out on top. No points have been awarded yet. And there's the two takedown for Rocha. A minute and 20 seconds left in the first period. Rocha up 2-0 over Twig. As we go out of bounds, there's a minute and 12 seconds left in the first period. Rocha up Eventually. Minute left here in the first period. Roach is still up 2 0. Gonna have a caution here on Rocha. We're gonna have another caution on Rocha. Rocha looking for a tilt there. He's got him in near fall. Only able to get a one count, no points yet. And there he's got at least two. And they're gonna give Rocha three near fall points there before Twig gets one escape. That's gonna put the score at five to one Rocha over Twig. Rocha able to get another takedown there. And as we go out of bounds, Rocha is winning seven to one with 29 seconds left in the... Twig tries to switch here. Rocha might catch him here, but... So far, nothing. Not in near fall criteria yet.
with eight seconds left here in the first period. And as the first period comes to an end, we've got Rocha, seven, Twig, one. Twig wins the disc flip. He's going to defer to Rocha. Rocha's going to choose down. Rocha looking for a switch right off the bat, but he comes up to his feet looking for an escape now. He's able to get it. That's going to put him up 8 to 1. Rocha with a shot fake there. Another shot fake by Rocha. Seems to be working well on the freshman twig. Rocha in on a high crotch. Rocha's going to have to get his arm around there, and then he'll be able to get his two. And there, Rocha finally is able to get around behind and get his two. That's going to put him up 10 to 1 with a minute and 18 seconds left here in the second period. And as Twig tries to hit a switch, he's able to get away and get one escape. And we're out of bounds. We're going to be neutral here. 10 to 2, Rocha over Twig. 57 seconds left in the second period. Rocha tries a bully double leg. Just out of bounds, but they do award the two takedown there. That's going to put Rocha up 12 to 2 over Twig. Twig with another great switch right off the whistle. He's going to be able to get at least one here. And as we go out of bounds, they are going to award one loss of control. So Twig and Rocha are going to be neutral here. Score is currently 12 to 3 Rocha over Twig with 27 seconds left in the second period. A little bit of comfort conference right now between the referees trying to decide whether the one loss of control should have been awarded or not. <laughs> After some discussion between the referees, they're going to decide to keep the one loss of control escape. Score is still 12 to 3 Rocha over Twig with 15 seconds left here in the second period. Rocha Twig looks to try to throw, and he's able to almost get Rocha on his back, but Rocha is able to fight through it and roll. Still going to be 12 to 3 here from the neutral position with less than half a second left in the second period. And as we head into the third period, we still have Rocha at 12, Twig at 3. Rocha trying to work that cross wrist here. Minute and 25 left in the third period here. Rocha on top in control, 12 to 3 over Twig. Rocha appears to be looking for that tilt on that far wrist.
minute and two seconds left here in the third period. Twig tries to switch, and Roach is just going to let him go. That's going to put it at 12 to 4. Roach dives in on a shot. Twig's holding on to that ankle pretty hard. He's going to need to unless if he's going to want to keep Rocha from getting two takedown. Over his head. And we're going to have a stalemate here with 38 seconds to go. We're neutral with Rocha at 12, Twig 4. Rocha dives in on a leg. Elevate the leg. Can't hold on to it. Elevate it. 20 seconds left here. Rocha still trying to get in on that leg. Meanwhile, Twig also looking like he wants to just grab a leg. Five seconds to go here. It looks like Rocha is going to hang on to win at a hundred and thirty two pounds ladies and gentlemen Zach Rocha is the champion with a win 12 to 4 over Twig of Wauseon here at 138 pounds in the NWL championships we have senior Cole Matt and a three-time league champion wrestling Brennan Short a junior from Archbold we're gonna have a caution green right off the bat Cole already committed to Michigan next year to join his brother Drew to wrestle up there for the Wolverines. Cole in on a deep shot on Brennan. Short tries to stay away from him, but it looks like Cole's going to be able to bring him down to the mat when he sweeps that far leg. Two, that's going to put Cole in the lead. 2-0 over Short. Short trying to work a stand up here on the edge of the mat, but Cole with a lot of pressure there. Looks like Matten's going to let up short and give him one. Hey, work from your tie. Work from your tie. Matten two, short one here with a minute and ten seconds left in the first period. We see the club and go. Club and go. There you go. Keep that motion going. Matt and working Short's head very hard here. Appears we got some blood time here on green. And as we resume here with 40 seconds left in the first period, we've got Matt and two, Short one. Matt and in on a leg. It looks like he's going to take that single leg up off the mat. Short's going to tr try to wizard. Matt and tried to get a little too fancy there. Nothing working for him there. We got blood time green again. As you resume here with 27 seconds left in the first period, it's still Matt and two, short one. Matt and in on a single leg. Short's trying to get some separation here between himself and that leg. Matt and decides to switch up double leg, and he's going to get the takedown there. As first period ends, it's going to be Matt and four, short one. And some more blood time here for Green. Here to start the second period, Brennan Short on top. But the score is still four to one, Matt and over Short. Brennan able to stay in control here. And some more blood time on Delta. <laughs> As we resume here in the second period, Matten trying to deal with the blood flow. He now has a face mask of tape on that makes him look like Bane from Batman. Short still on top though. Short throws a leg in. Still 4-1 here, Matt and over short. And it looks like Matt's going to be able to get the reversal there. 
That's going to put them up 6-1 with a minute and 20 seconds remaining here in the second period. Matt and looking around that wing over on the side. Matt and finally with the turn there. Short's going to try to fight off his back here. But he is pinned by Matt and with 38 seconds remaining in the second period. Matten is your four-time league champion by fall over Brendan Short. <laughs> Wrestling here at 152 pounds for the third place match, we have Carson Meyer from Archibald and Ethan Glover from Wauseon. Glover posting on Meyer's head there. Thought about trying to trip there, but not quite. Meyer grabs a leg. Meyer trying to stay in bounds with that single leg, but they go out of bounds. 15 seconds remain in the first period. We're going to have some blood time on Wasion. As we resume action here in the first period, it's still tied 0 0 between Meyer and Glover. Glover tries to trip there at the end. Wire brushes back into him, but neither are going to get a takedown as the first period comes to a close. Glover wins the disc flip. He's going to choose down. Meyer running a tight waist here. Meyer looking for a tilt here, trying to bring him back down by it. Instead, he switches up to a single leg, brings him up in the air. Might be able to use that to get some back points. Had him in near fall criteria, but apparently not for a two count. And as we go out of bounds, the score is still 0-0. Meyer and Glover going it with a minute and 15 seconds left in the second period. Meyer with a good breakdown there. Glover tries to stand up. Meyer's able to catch a leg. He's got him in the single leg. Tries to tree topper. He's able to bring him back down onto the mat. And they're out of bounds. Still 0 0 here with 42 seconds remaining in the second period. Meyer looking for a cradle here. Might have it locked up. And he doesn't. 28 seconds left in the period. Meyer trying to get that far wrist tilt here. Trying to get a cheap tilt over here to the back. Not in near fall criteria apparently though. 15 seconds left.
And it seems that at the end of period two, we will remain tied 0-0 between Meyer and Glover. Meyer's gonna choose down to begin the third period. Glover's running a claw. Meyer hand fighting with him, trying to get a stand up here. Glover able to pressure him back down into the mat. Meyer again trying to stand up. Glover looks like he's running a half up there. Meyer able to peel it off. Glover able to trip him and bring him back down onto the mat though. Meyer is almost able to get one there. This is a very nice sit out by Meyer. Still tied 0-0 though with a minute 29 remaining in the third period. Meyer hand fighting here on bottom. Glover kind of looks like he's looking for a cradle there. Meyer able to come up to his feet a little bit briefly. Glover hanging on here. Meyer's trying to break free, but Glover keeps returning him down to the mat. Minute left here in the third period. Meyer's finally able to get an escape. That's going to put him in the lead 1-0 over Glover with 54 seconds left in the third period. Glover tries to trip Meyer. Meyer in on a dump. Meyer able to get it, but the ref says they were out of bounds. Meyer's still up here, one nothing, with 39 seconds left in the third period over Glover. Glover tries to reach for a leg, unable to. Meyer trapped underneath. Glover looks like he's trying to throw, but we go out of bounds. 23 seconds remaining here in the third period. Still Meyer one, Glover zero. Glover in on a single leg, trying to get around behind, but Meyer's able to sprawl. Meyer's gonna try to get some separation here. Glover tries to spin around behind. Meyer needs to keep sprawling. Glover holding on to that leg. Nine seconds left, and they awards it. Carson Meyer, the two takedown. That's probably gonna seal it. Glover does get one more escape, but your final score is gonna be Carson Meyer, three, Glover, one. Carson receives third place at the NWOIL League Championships. Now up for the 182 pound championship NWOIL match. Mason Babcock, a junior from Archibald against Dylan McCandless, a sophomore from Bryan. Babcock looking to be heavy on that head here. Minute and 24 left in the first period. Babcock here trying to get the head down of McCandless but unable to. Fifty seconds remaining here in the first period. Still 0-0 between Babcock and McCandless. Babcock in on a single leg. And he's able to bring him down to the mat for two takedown. Hey, 
We got 2-0 Babcock here over McCandless with 35 seconds remaining in the first period. McKinless is able to get one escape there. That's going to put it at 2-1 Babcock over McKinless. Eight seconds left in the period. And at the end of the first period, it's 2-1 Babcock over McKinless. McKinless wins the disc flip. He defers to Babcock. Babcock's going to choose down here to start the second period. Babcock with a quick stand up here, trying to get some separation to get that one escape. Let him go! Cut him! Cut him! McCandless able to keep him from getting that escape right there as they wrestle on the edge of the mat. Babcock almost slips away there, and now he's able to. He gets one escape there. That's going to put him up 3-1 over McKendless. Babcock with both hands on McKinless' neck, trying to work that head down. Babcock kind of looking like he's considering a slide by here. Both wrestlers very heavy on the other's head. 49 seconds remaining here in the second period. Babcock up 3-1, and as he gets another takedown, that's going to put him up 5-1. Still Babcock in control there as they go out of bounds. Nearly gave up a reversal there, but he was able to maintain control. Babcock trying to hang on here, prevent getting the escape. Down on one leg, trying to hold on here. And as the second period comes to an end, we have Babcock at 5-1. The Bryan coaches are questioning the uh, two takedown by Babcock there with about 30 seconds left in the period. McKinless is trying to choose <laughs> He's going to choose down here to begin the third period. Babcock up 5-1 over McKendless. They're going to have a caution on Babcock there. McKendless trying to get an escape there, frantically scrambling around. Babcock able to keep him under control, though. Babcock grabs that far wrist. Looks like he might be trying to think about tilting him here, but he lets go of it. Minute and 40 remaining in the third period here. Babcock lets him up. That puts it at five to two, Babcock over McKendless. Minute and 30 remaining in the third period. McKendless reaches for a leg. Not even close on it, though. Again, just reaching for a leg. Bye-bye. 
50 seconds remaining here in the third period. Babcock up still 5-2. to two. Babcock shot fakes and then he comes back up. Babcock again with another shot fake. McKinless is trying to reach around and pull and get a headlock, but he's unable to. Babcock lands on top of him. That's going to put him up 7-2 to two over McKinless with 27 seconds remaining here in the third period. McKinless trying to get another stand up here. Babcock looking like he might tilt him from neutral. Decides to let him go instead. That's going to put the score at 7-3. to three. Babcock over McKinless. Babcock just trying to stay away at this point. Almost with another takedown there. And that's going to be the match, ladies and gentlemen. Mason Babcock is your 182-pound NWOIL League champion.